So Lex, we're going to have you come out again. And we are going to take a photo. We're going to use this light up here as the main light. And what you have to do is this lumosphere should be up. It can go up and down. It needs to be up. And you need to point it to where your camera is. So I'm going to be shooting from about right here. So I'm going to point this to where my camera is going to be. That's very, very important. And this needs to be as close to your subject as possible. And so what I want to do, I'm going to push you to the side, mm -hmm. is I want to have this where her eyes are, because her eyes are uh, the most important for me uh, from a, an exposure standpoint. But if I jab her in the face with this, that's no good. So what I will normally do is I'll put this right underneath the chin. Because when I put it underneath the chin, notice that this is now in line with her eyes. So I get the same distance. And also, putting it under the chin when you're working outside in natural light, um, sometimes if the sun falls directly on the lumosphere, it can give you incorrect values. So by putting this underneath the chin, what it will do is it will actually give it a little teeny bit of shade. And so you'll, you'll save yourself that hassle. I didn't know that. Say, Connick called me and they're like, we love how you tell everybody to put it underneath their chin because it fixes this. I'm like, oh, I didn't know. I was just so I didn't jab somebody in the eye. That's why I was doing it. So um, I'm going to put you back this way. And then I am going to, remember, I'm not metering it to the light. I'm metering it to where the camera is going to be. And so what I'll do is I'll take this. I'm going to point it to where my camera is going to be. I'll click the little button. And this tells me 80th of a second is what I need to set my camera to. So 4.5, 80th of a second, ISO 1600. What if I wanted to be at a shutter speed of, let's say, 125? All I have to do is push my ISO button and change my ISO until my meter tells me 125. And it tells me, oh, I would have to be at an, app, an ISO value of 2500. So you can just take one reading and then change one of the parameters to get it'll solve for the third. And so once you have that one reading, you don't have to do a bunch of, like, what if this, what if this? And so you can instantly take a reading and go, oh, to have my shutter speed fast enough to shoot in this environment, I need to be at, oh, that ISO, and off you go to the races. So let's try it. So this is at 125, 4.5, ISO 1600, or uh, 2500. The other thing with these guys is sometimes you have to calibrate your meter to your camera. And this one has not been calibrated to my camera. So it could be, potentially, off a smidge. Because every camera and every meter are built to slightly different variations or specifications, which is why once you have your light meter and you've calibrated it and got it dialed in correctly, which you do with the gray card, um, you just keep it as your own. And you never let anybody else have it, because it's perfect. OK, so we're going to try this. This is, uh, and Lex, I'm going to have you hold this for me. So the ISO was 2,500. So I've got that. The uh, shutter speed was 125. Is that right? Is that what it says? 125. And the aperture value was 4.5. All right. And now we're going to try this. We're going to see it, see if it works. Perfect. All right. Now this is awesome. Watch this. Out of the box. Boom. Perfect exposure. Spot on. There's like, it's perfect. And so that's the joy of having a light meter is once you have it, it is perfect.